Hi folks, Paul here. Back in April 2016, I did a video titled uh, 18650's History, which was slightly clickbaity title, but anyway, and that was a video speculating about the, the time when harvesting 18650's from laptop batteries would become harder and harder because laptops are not really using 18650s anymore, they're using pouch cells. And so I thought I might update that general concept of idly speculating on the future of the DIY power walls community scene, whatever it is you want to call this, this thing, hobby we're engaged in. It's now September 2017 and quite a few things have changed in that intervening time, uh, I started doing my power wall, my first video was back in, when was it, January 2016, now um, it's almost two years later, and in that time the people have built 40 kilowatt hour power walls that are in and running happily in their homes, there's the DIYpowerwall.com uh, forum which has made it incredibly easy for new people to come and share and learn and um, everyone's kind of helping each other. It's definitely developed into a community hobby scene which is really cool. We're starting to get a, a little bit of media attention so that's kind of interesting. And there's, there's a few other things that that I think are worth noting. Um, so when, when I started back in January 2016, there were other people doing the same kind of thing. Jehu Garcia was doing his whole um, battery modules, the big ones, and HB Powerwall was uh, just starting up and he was working through his bus bars. Um, but we were all, um, all the people who were doing, um, playing with 18650s and harvesting, we were all experimenters and we all knew that we were kind of playing with these things, the 18650s, in order to see whether that made sense, whether it was a thing that could be used effectively in large-scale um, power banks. So there was a few, there was a few unknowns which is worth thinking about. So the first unknown was, can you harvest enough cells to build up a decent sized pack? And it's pretty clear that yes you can. Can you substitute these large collections of cells for what everyone was doing about two years ago, which was either lead acid batteries or large, large format lithium polymer or um, lithium ion battery modules and I think the answer is definitely you can. Another question mark that was not clear was could this be done cheaply enough and the answer to that now is kinda. As long as you treat this as a hobby and not as some kind of activity that should pay its way, as long as you assume your time is worth zero, then you can get enough batteries to make this a, a worthwhile endeavour. And one of the particularly nice things about doing the recycling harvesting process is that the initial costs are quite low. Um, you can kind of build up to a larger pack over time without having to fork out a big sum of money. The alternative at the moment is either to build up something with lead acid batteries. I had a small solar system with lead acid batteries, deep cycle batteries, and I didn't manage them as, as well as I should have. And after five years they were pretty crap, which is why I was interested in going down the 18650 route. I had this small system with these crappy lead acid and um, wanted to replace them with something cheap and 18650s was the answer I was looking for. So you can do it as long as you treat it as a hobby. Um, you can't 
harvest 18650s and build up battery packs as a living. Um, and then the other question mark that is, has kind of, I think, been answered is can you do this safely? And uh, I think the answer is yes, you can do it safely, but you can also do it unsafely. And um, I think lots of people are struggling with this, wrestling with this safety question at the moment, especially as the media starts to um, shine some light on, on what we're up to. There's a whole bunch of people who are, who are going, oh, that doesn't look safe at all. And you do need to pay attention to some of the details of what the do-it-yourselfers are doing in order to see what what needs to happen in order to make it a safe system. Uh, it's very easy to make an unsafe system. So that's kind of what's happening at the moment. The other thing that is interesting at the moment is the legislation for power packs is, is I think, underprepared for the, the near future where the number of people who have, have solar and uh, 18650 or some kind of lithium power pack at home, I think is going to skyrocket pretty quickly. And the exciting thing about this whole DIY scene is that we're on the vanguard of that that process. But legislation in the various jurisdictions isn't quite prepared for, I think, um, the onslaught of people running large battery packs at home. So looking forward to the future. Here's what I'm expecting. Uh, it's going to get harder and harder to find decent 18650s in laptop packs because new laptops mostly don't have them. The early um, DIYers have grabbed most of the cheap laptop packs. These days, even at my local, my local IT recycler, He's now charging $100 for 50 laptop batteries, but he's holding them for special customers, so you can't actually get them from him anymore. And even the ones that he's got and are getting are starting to get a bit old. Jehu Garcia, in his videos, is showing lots of new or unsold battery packs that are coming through the recyclers, IT recyclers, in the US. And that's obviously the, the, the future that the rest of the world will eventually catch up to. Certainly here in New Zealand, we've got, I think the, the national population of EVs is about 4,000 vehicles. So we're not seeing a lot of used or damaged EV battery packs, and we're not seeing a whole lot of hoverboard batteries or things like that and I think our situation is probably very similar to Australia, to Africa, to Asia, any place that's not America and the rich countries in Europe are still likely to be some way away from seeing oodles of cheap new unsold 18650s. So it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out whether the kind of deals that Jehu is showing on his channel um, will will become the norm throughout the world or will the rest of us keep having to scrounge batteries from um, wherever we can be that lithium drill batteries or medical devices or what have you. Uh, it's a bit hard to tell but certainly, looking at Jehu's videos, you get the sense that there's an awful lot of there's an awful lot, awful lot of batteries floating around in, in the USA. So I'm a bit jealous about that. So there's going to be oodles of lithium-ion batteries. Will they be cheaply available for the do-it-yourself community? In America, yes. In the rest of the world, not so clear. The, the question of, is it with the do-it-yourself do power wall scenario is still going to be true in New Zealand, Australia, poorer parts of uh, Europe and the rest of the world. 
In America, there's pretty stiff competition from real Tesla Powerwalls and other lithium-ion Powerwall kind of things. So that's going to make have an interesting effect on the do-it-yourself community in the US. I think in the US it's all going to be about um, how do you connect up larger packs than how do you solve it together in the 1850s. The nice thing about buying a commercial unit is that it, the safety um, issues are all um, borne by the manufacturer and so you've got someone, you've got a guarantee and you've got somebody else to um, take care of all those issues. The question marks about safety within the do-it-yourself Powerwall scene, I think, need to be more clearly addressed. And I think if we were able to collectively produce a best practice guide, that would be a very useful uh, tool to reduce the risks. So I'm certainly willing to help the creation of some kind of best practice guide I think would be a, a really good a really good thing for the wider community. Um, the, the, the people who are freaking out um, keep on saying the thing is going to catch on fire, there's going to be a house fire from one of these do-it-yourself systems and I, I presume the odds are that that's um, likely to happen and then those of us like myself who do YouTube videos basically I'm encouraging people to to um, get involved we bear some responsibility for what happens to the newcomers the newbies who really don't know what they're doing if we can, as a community, collectively produce uh, either a, a wiki or something that has best practice for all the different elements of building up a, a power wall with different scenarios, whether you use pairs of cells or single cells, whether you weld the cells together or whether you use Tesla style fuses and solder them and whatever. We should be able to come up with some kind of guide that makes more clear and more explicit the, the risks that each choice has and recommendations for what the lowest risk techniques are. So I think that's quite a, a worthwhile endeavour. So I'm, I've, I've only just really th thought of this so I'm going to have to do some more thinking about how to help that come together. So uh, if you have any thoughts on all those ideas, if you'd like to help work on a best practice guide of some sort, uh, whether it be a series of YouTube videos or a wiki or whatever, uh, one of the things about this community is it, it seems to have kick-started from a bunch of YouTube videos, Jacob Garcia and Peter Matthews are the prime movers and shakers who have been generating lots of amazing content. So perhaps a best practice guide would work better on YouTube more than a wiki. Let me know what you think. I'd love to engage with a few people to further the best practice guide concept. I'd love to hear what other thoughts you've had about the, the community and where we might be hidden with this whole lithium-ion battery pack hobby. Uh, anyway, let me know what you think and uh, thanks for watching. Cheers! The other one of the, one of the, what do I want to say, what the, what the hell am I saying? Um,